to go to class. Some of them probably have classes with you. Um, other than, uh, some of them just stay in class with us all day because they're not um, able to go. But um, in my position, you need a high school diploma. Um, you uh, have to, either you can have uh, the lead, what's it? Um, with a GED, mm -hmm. yeah, you can have a GED as well. Um, in order for you to work for Fresno Unified, you need to have 60 college credits now, or you need to pass the No Child Left Behind test. So it, it's, um, when I got hired on um, in the district, I was only an NTA. Do you guys know what an NTA is? Yeah. New time assistant, yeah. Um, I actually worked at AIR, so I got on here um, a little bit like, six months after my second son was born, which was cool because I was, I had done elementary school and I was like so scared to come work with high school students, but I would not change my job for anything. I, I love working with high school kids. And a lot of people, when they, they hear that I go work at a high school, they're like, what, isn't that scary? But it's not, you guys are not scary. So. <laughs> So, but I love working with my kids. Um, I've developed relationships after they graduate. Um, I, they text me, they have me on Facebook. Um, the parents have developed relationships with me as well because while they're here for four years, um, you know, you're, you just become friends and you try not to because you have to do your job as well. But with them, you're just like, you know, you want to make their daily lives as normal as possible, even though there is no normal, but you just want them to have the same experience like everybody else does in high school. Um, we do go to prom. I've, bought, I've gone to prom. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've gone to prom like four times, so, um, but we go to prom. If they want to go to Silvergrad, I went to Silvergrad last year with Sarah. Do you guys remember Sarah? Little Sarah? She's I think, like, yeah. Yeah, I went to Silvergrad and prom with her, so. That was a good experience. Um, my average work of hours is like 30 hours a week. I start at 7.30 and I end at two. So I get here before the kids get off the bus and when they leave, I leave. So I'm, I'm pretty much like school day hours as like with you guys. Um, I'm Monday through Friday, which is pretty good. It's pretty good to work weekdays and then have weekends off with my kids. Um, that was the perks of working for a school district. Right? <laughs> um, weekends and summers, right? That's yeah. why we do it. Um, my average level, my wage, I believe I started at nine and you get, um, I got a raise as I went on. I currently don't know right now because I haven't looked. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but my daily duties with my kids, um, I get them off the bus, we get breakfast, we take them to class, we uh, feed them. Some of the students need to be fed. They need help with assistance. Um, we have them use the restroom and then we send them off to class. Some of the students, I go to class with them. Others are capable of going by themselves. Um, but yeah, um, if they have homework, we help them with their homework. We assist them with that. And yeah, it's pretty much like our classroom is a home base for them. They don't necessarily have to stay in our class. They are able to go out and have lunch with their friends. They can bring their friends to our classroom. We don't, you know, a lot of the times their friends like to come and hang out with us because we have music on or we'll play like the Wii during, you know, break time, not all the time, just when we're not doing any curriculum. Because with the kids that are in, that are in class, we do curriculum. We'll do like functional skills as far as like, um, uh, just like about relationships um, as far as like learning about the stop sign and stuff. A lot of familiar um, things that we know that some of them need to, you know, get that, understand themselves. Because a lot of the times uh, these students are going to go to other programs after they graduate Sunnyside and they're going to go into adult programs. Some of them are going to be able to handle jobs themselves. No, she's not here today. Um, dress code, oh, so, but pretty much that's my job description. What I do is help the students. And um, I just don't help them. If the teacher needs assistance in their classroom, I more than will help them too, because 
there's a lot of kids in that class, a lot of them need help. I'm not gonna just be like, no, you know, everybody needs help. So if you guys are in the class and you need me to help you, I'll feel free to ask. Don't ever feel that you can't ask me. Um, the dress code, whatever, we usually follow the same dress code as you guys. Um, it's pretty, you know, we have to be a role example to you guys, so we have to pretty much be the same. But most of the time, I'm usually like this, or I'll wear a sunny side shirt. Um, it depends on the days that if we're gonna do something like, like, uh, like go off campus, usually I'll wear a sunny side shirt to represent our school, because I'm proud of who I represent. <laughs> um, my tools uh, needed, you know what, honestly, a lot of patience and a kind heart because um, as an aide assistant towards these students, um, you need a lot of patience, a lot. And um, I honestly put myself, when I first got hired for the position, um, my son was three years old and he was supposed to be born with spina bifida. And he actually doesn't have spina bifida. But what's weird is that my placement in my life right now is I work with students with spina bifida. So to know I was supposed to have a child that way, um, I, appreci I appreciate my kids more, but I also appreciate those kids that I work with because I would want somebody to treat my kid. I would want to have them trust me because I treat them as if they're my own because we're with them all day. And these parents who have a special needs child, um, there's a lot of things that go on in their head, like can I trust this adult? Are they gonna be taken care of? Are they gonna feed them? Are they gonna go to the bathroom? You know, there's a lot of trust that you have to build with parent and student and aide. So it's just, you need a lot of patience, you need a kind heart, you need to set all um, emotions that what's going on in the outside world, I have to leave it out there because these kids rely on me. Like my real kids rely on me at home to keep things intact at, at home, you know. <laughs> I need to do the same here. Like they rely on me so much. So if I'm in a bad mood, I can't show them that I'm in a bad mood. I have to give my, my 100% because that's, that's the way it should be with any, any teacher actually. Mm -hmm. So um, with my job, there's really not much advancement. I'm pretty much, this is it, unless I wanna go do a desk job, which not really. <laughs> <laughs> I really like going class to class and meeting other students on campus. It's really fun. I'm actually going back to school right now to become a teacher in special ed, so. Um, it's I, kind of like an advancement. It's, yeah. It's just different. Yeah. yeah, it's just, yeah, I, it's my personal self to advance, <laughs> my personal goals. So I decided to go back to school to become a teacher. So, um, pros and cons. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, you know what? There's really no cons. Like, I mean, I enjoy my job, so I don't feel like there's any cons. Okay, maybe the only thing is, is like when the kids are sick, some of them really can't tell us. We can just go by their expression or if they, you know, throw up or something. There's just, that's the only thing because a lot of the time, you know, it's just, we try to take care of them as, as much as we can, but it's just, it's hard when they can't really express themselves on how they feel. That's one thing that you need to just like really like focus on, on their facial expressions, their, the way they just look, if they're lethargic, that's it. The pro is, the pro is Special Olympics. That's like mm -hmm. the best part. The best part is meeting other kids off of campus, like Hoover, McLean, like meeting other special ed kids and going out there and seeing them do accomplishments and having fun and just being out yeah. there. Huh? Enjoying. Yeah, because you go, right? Yeah, it's pretty fun, huh? Yeah. So, but I like it, it's fun. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. What questions do you guys have right now? 
Do you guys all understand that? Do, do the kids call you Miss Rosca? They call me Miss Jessica. Okay, Ms. I Jessica. feel more comfortable that okay. way. <laughs> do yeah. you guys understand that Miss Jessica, um, she, I, I should have given you a spot to write that at the top. Maybe underneath your name, will you write that you're an instructional aide or a paraprofessional, whichever you want to put um, there? Paraprofessional. Okay. So underneath her name up there at the top, put paraprofessional so that you guys know that that's her actual title. Yeah. Just got out from working out. <sighs> Just waiting for the light. That was like the best workout ever. I hit it hard. I um, did a little bit of cardio before I started working out because I wanted to sweat a little bit more. And boy, I stinky. Man, this light. I'm gonna take a shower and start my day. So yeah, the best time to work out in the morning is in the morning. The best time to work out is in the morning. I feel, I mean, honestly, just to start your day and for you to feel good about yourself, you know, get that workout, get that blood pumping. Um, I worked out with a friend. I saw somebody from school who actually goes to the same gym, gym as me. So it was pretty cool running into her. And she said that she's like a real fitness junkie and that if we have any questions that she would help us out with our workout which is nice it's always nice to meet new people who have the same goals as you as far as living healthy and wanting to work out so anyways but I'm about to go home I just finished I feel so gross but that's okay because I feel so good um I did circuit training um, at Fitness Evolution. They have the circuit training area. Everything's in a circle. And we just, I do at least um, 15 reps three times of everything. And um, it's usually 75 pound weights or 60 pound weights, however I can handle. I'm trying to go up on my weight, I'm trying to get my arms back the way they used to be. So that's, that's my main goal. Um, gotta get my body ready for my bikini. Yeah, right. <laughs> but no, I want to look nice for the summer with my arms. I love wearing tank tops during the summertime. So, um, but yeah, I'm heading back. The boys are going to be heading out to do their delivery for best time ever. And then I'm going to take a shower, go buy a birthday present for two birthday parties. And yeah, and then just probably go to the movies later with the boys. I feel really good. Like, I felt a little crappy. Every time, you know, this happens, I... I wait forever just to go work out and then once I work out have some good conversation with my friend and it's really good it's really good you should I mean at least find somebody who you can work out with you know they keep you accountable because she kept me accountable um, to go to the gym with her I mean I act like I'm so busy which I am with the boys in school and work but I'm not too busy to go to the gym I mean I, I remember right when I had weight loss surgery, I used to go to the gym like at nine o'clock at night and I used to just do treadmill. It wasn't even doing a full workout. It was just maybe like tread for like 20 minutes and just get a cute little sweat going, you know, and that's about it. I mean, just as long as you're moving and you're out there, pretty much that's your workout. I mean, you got to do something. You can't be stationary, you know, and I'm, you know, my four year anniversary is coming out um, in May. It's coming up soon. So I gotta, I gotta stick to it, you know? It's gonna always be there. It's always gonna be part of my life to live a healthy lifestyle. Um, because that's what I chose when I decided to have gastric bypass. Like, it's not an easy way out. You have to maintain, you know? So I'm about to get onto my street. So I will see you guys later. Happy Saturday, it was a really good workout. Take care guys. So we're all out together as a family in the Mustang, the Cherry Bomb. We're heading out right now to go to the movies to see McFarlane a little later than what we thought. Um, we have a special guest coming with us, but he we won't we won't vlog him. Huh? I don't think your dad would understand. Okay. So, I don't know. We invited him because Victor's nice. I'm a nice guy. You're a nice guy. So, oh, and I brought my friends with me, Tupac and Biggie. See, I actually was wearing, oh, and Easy, I forgot, and Snoop Dogg. Um, I was wearing a different outfit today. I was, you know, dressed like you know, nice. But after we ate lunch, I felt all like sick and stuff. 
I felt tired and I felt snugged so I needed to like I don't know I just needed to just put my sweats on and stuff is that that Mustang that sounds good? ours is the Mustang that sounds good there we saw some guy who was just laying out on his back like out the ambulance was there uh -huh. was on the sidewalk oh dang on Belmont uh-huh Good morning guys, it's Sunday morning and we're off to a birthday party at 10.30. On our way to Pump It Up, Pump It Up is an indoor bounce house where they have all these different little bounce houses that you could um, jump on. Nothing it's like ours. a, it's nothing compared to our best time ever bounce houses. But I mean this is inside and obviously our weather outside today is not okay to have a birthday party outside considering the fact that people did rent a bounce house yesterday yeah. and the weather's still the same. So, I, cont I contributed to the potluck uh, for the adults. So, I brought um, seven layer dip, but it's only six because I forgot onions. Six layer, <laughs> six layer dip. You can kind of see it in there. There you go. So, we're meeting up with my sister. Um, she's over there. She's helping out with the birthday girls party. We need to eat at Doghouse Grill. Dad, yeah. Dad, you might take us. Oh, last night. Okay, so we didn't continue the vlog last night after we had finished watching watching McFarland. And let me tell you guys, that is such a great, inspiring movie to see with the family, right? Right. If you guys, you know, have young men or, I mean, not even young men, just inspiring to be something in life. Just go watch that movie because it'll make you just want to run and just to be better in life. I mean, I walked away wanting to hurry up and finish school, like take more classes on and just take it more seriously. I know the boys were voicing that Victor wanted to do better in school and to like do his, you know, focus more on his grades. Huh, Victor? Yeah, it's a really good movie. It's so inspiring. I don't want to give too much of it because you guys just need to see it. And it made me cry and laugh all in the right parts. There's a part of the movie where it's inspiring because his dad has doubt in him. Yeah. It's it's really sad when parents don't believe in you. And I hope these boys know that we believe in them like 100%. Huh? Huh, guys? We always tell you guys that you can do whatever you want if you set your mind to it all the time. It's so motivating and it just makes you realize um, what not to be as a parent. How your children are always watching you and you need to you need to be there, you know, 100% as far as like giving them support, backing them up, whatever they want to do. So, yeah, but you guys need to see the movie. I gave it a thumbs up. Dominic wants to see it again. He really got something out of it, huh, Dominic? He really liked that movie, and he's only going to be 10. And for that movie to hit a child for so young and inspire him to do better in wrestling, huh, or any sport, that's pretty good. So, yeah, I liked it. At first, I was like, oh, my God, it's a boy movie. <laughs> it's a boy movie. What am I going to like about it? But I loved it. It was so good. Yeah. And two people from it went to Fresno State. Right. Fresno State. Um, two of those boys graduated from Fresno State and became a teacher and a counselor. Pretty inspiring. It was nice to see that um, Fresno and Clovis were mentioned in the movie, which is pretty awesome. So, yeah. Put Fresno, Clovis, and McFarland on the map. McFarland's a really small town. It's like right off near Bakersfield, huh? I had a friend from McFarland. Mm -hmm. Violet. My friend Violet. Is yeah. that a <laughs> No. So yeah, we're on our way. We're going to Madeira right now. We're on Shaw. Hey, Dad. Yeah. Hey, Dad. How many times have you 
have you seen it? I've only seen it like... I think we've been to Monster Jam like five times already. I think so, because you guys seen it at the fairgrounds, and then you guys seen it so many times at, at Save Mart Center. But we missed one day because we seen them already. Oops, sorry, it's not focusing. Yeah. It's okay. You don't have to go all the time. This time they have the tricks that don't come to Fresno Hunt. Yeah. <laughs> what? Nothing. You're so cute. Hi, Say hi, Victor. Hello. Hello. He's all. Hello. Boys are playing air hockey. Me, oh, Victor, Victor won, baby, Victor won. <laughs> he got one in. Me and Victor and I used to play air hockey a lot when we were younger. We used to go to Blackbeard. Oh, dang. <laughs> we used to play it at Blackbeard um, when we were younger. We used to go to Blackbeard. It's like a video game place. Oh, it's a tie. High five. No. Ah, I gotta take off my jacket. You gotta take your jacket off now? Yeah. This is serious. This is serious. I'm about to win. You're about to win? I'm about to win. Ah. You just won? Okay, Dominic. Oh, 
So I'm here by myself. The boys took off to go pick up all the deliveries for the tables and the bounce house that they rented out yesterday. And I'm by myself. Well, Winnie's here, but she's over there by perched on her little couch. I just finished prepping dinner. We're gonna have um, pork chili verde, green sauce. Um, I found some green sauce. Herdez has this really good salsa verde that, um, that the boys really like because they're very picky on their green sauce. They think that green sauce is very spicy and I don't have time to make my own because some people make their own but I don't have time because as you know right now, we came home, they dropped me off, I changed my clothes, put my favorite outfit on. This is like my favorite go-to right now. These little pants, these jogger pants. I'll show you guys my outfit. Okay. This is my go-to outfit right now, like every day. And I've washed it, but you know, my favorite sweatshirt of my original gangsters because you know I love me some Tupac and some Snoop Dogg and some Easy. I like a little bit of Biggie, but these are my West Coast guys, my West Coast connection. Got to keep it real. And my little flippy sandals that my son bought me, um, like in January. Yeah. So. This is my cash. I'm just cash right now because um, I just finished prepping dinner in the crock pot. I'm going to do beans and rice later when it gets closer to it being done. It should be done by 6 o'clock because I um, I started cooking it like at 1.30. And it don't take that long because I have it on high. So this is what it looks like. The pork. Victor likes pork chili verde. Although Victor doesn't like pork, like he won't eat pork chops, but he'll eat this. He'll tear it up. And we have flour tortillas for them to eat. And I have corn for myself because that's how I eat it. Because, um, you know, corn has less sugar than the flour and that's how I eat it. So I kind of want to write a letter to my unborn child, to my girl, like how she would, how I would want her to be as a woman. Like I just, I mean, this is going deep now. I never, this is like kitchen confessions because I feel like I always go deep in the kitchen. I don't know. Anyways, um, I never, I always thought that I was going to have a little girl. And when I had Victor, they had said, oh yeah, like he would be a girl. Like when they had the ultrasound, they had said he was like 75%. Well, obviously he came out a boy. And I'm blessed to have my boys. I love them a lot to me because my whole life and their whole life we revolve around each other and as for if i was to have a daughter i don't know how our relationship would be i would want her to be close to me but she'd probably be close to her dad because i don't know i mean i'm not i'm close to my dad but i'm close I'm, I'm close to both parents but growing up i was really close to my mom um that's because i mean i would take her shopping and we would go out to lunch with my grandma and just stuff like that. So I think with my mom and her, being her daughter, when I was the youngest growing up, because my sister was moved out already. She already had her family because we are 10 years apart. So me and my family, as far as my mom, we lived together, but I moved out when I was 19 because I got tired of living by the rules. So my dad said, if you don't like it, move out. So I did. And I've been out ever since. So I always had at least two jobs and I managed to make a lifestyle for myself and for my family. And I do go back and like for help if I need like financial or whatever or anything. They're always willing to help me like if I take care of the boys or if they're sick and I can't, you know. It's just being a mother is a lot of work. So, but if I was to have a daughter, I don't know how my life would be. I don't know, it'd probably be different from what it is now with the boys, but it'd probably be more chaotic because she'd be hormonal as well as I am too. So maybe it's a blessing in disguise that I just have my boys and not a girl because I'm enough for them to handle. And if we had two females in the mix, it'd be crazy. It'd be real crazy. But um, I remember like when I was little, my mom used to take me to Sanger to go see my grandma on Saturdays. 
and we'd have lunch with her and we go eat and we go shopping and we see my grandpa and then when my grandpa passed we'd go visit the cemetery and I mean I have a lot of really good memories of being my mom with my mom and my grandma but I have a lot of good memories with my dad but he was always at work but now that my boys are older they have tons of memories of my mom and dad because my mom and dad took care of my kids when I started working and I'm really blessed to have my mom and dad to be watching over my kids um, you know as I work and go to school so they've allowed me to um, live my life as I continue to do what I want to do with school and become a teacher they're very supportive about that so but yeah ooh, I got deep I got real deep but yeah, I'm here. I feel like I have something in my nose. I have allergies. But it's raining outside and it's not fun. I don't like it when it's raining. I don't like to drive the Mustang when it's raining. So I'm home. And I hope the boys come home really soon because I don't like them out there. They're pulling in a wet bounce house. That sucks. Wet and plastic probably. It's they're probably having the hardest time ever. So. But I'm getting dinner ready for the boys. I'm going to have this. We're going to have this tonight and tomorrow. I'm not cooking tomorrow because tomorrow is Monday. Ooh, Twitter. Twitter. I love Twitter. I'm starting to get back on Twitter now. I'm trying to social net more. Plus to bring out my channel because I've been finding a lot more weight loss surgery patients who are on Twitter. And a lot of them are using like Twitter as a venting tool like to help them out. Like if they've had struggles as far as like venting as um like needing some kind of like not advice but just support and i didn't use twitter as that that time like four years ago i didn't i had a twitter but it was only to see like watch like new kids on a block and tweet but i don't know i guess as i get further along in my surgery i'm finding different mechanism tool mechanisms to social network my my um my channel my youtube channel so thank you guys for watching thumbs up the video like subscribe do all that business but you know um like i said this channel is clearly for you know everybody to watch but for the weight loss channel the weight loss surgery patient who has gone um four years and beyond living a regular life or some somewhat regular life but yeah um but yeah i'm here by myself talking to you guys so I'm not really by myself, but alrighty, I'm going to finish up and I'll see you guys in a bit.